Let's look back. You wanted to be in a hospital administration. You ended up in administration of something which is which feeds the hospitals. You've been in this for 34 years. In, ter in terms of what you wanted to do, how has this worked out? How fulfilling is this? For I, I have no regrets. I have uh, achieved a lot locally, nationally. I've maintained uh, a high level of, of uh, contribution to the community as far as the, the millions we've taken care of. I'm not a medic, but I've been able to provide uh, the fuel for the furnace to keep everything going. It's been very challenging uh, as far as uh, the business of health care. The politics of, of th this job have been at times grueling. At times it's been uh, more than I wanted to, uh, to deal with, but I knew there was a means to the end. You know, when, I, when my wife woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning on the 16th of November saying she was, as you know, a nurse and said she had a headache from hell and uh, I need to call an ambulance. And I said, you got to be kidding. She goes, no, call an ambulance. And so I was talking to her as I was getting dressed. I'd called and uh, went to the door to let them in. When we came back, she was in a coma. So I was only out of the room a few minutes. I, of course, you know, you think you're cool hand Luke all the time. I couldn't, when they took off, I tried to call my daughters, couldn't use my phone. I was just uh, really nervous or apprehensive. And I got to St. John and they had their stroke team there and a the neurosurgeon there. And one of the things that came out of that while I was waiting was thinking, you know, Everything possibly that could have been done was done. Now we got to see what happens. I got to feel uh, the accomplishment of providing that. I mean, everything that could technologically and personally, uh, from the moment they picked up the call in the 911 center till the ambulance got there till we got her to St. John was clockwork. The right thing clinically and time sensitive. And when I go to bed at night and wake up in the morning, I think, you know, there's a million people who are responsible to to uh, take care of and at times that can be daunting and at times it's uh, a sense of reward but it's you know it's a hell of a responsibility you know it's not any different than shared by other local local groups whether it's hospitals or police or fire or government or I do internalize it. You mentioned the problems you had with stress and tension during the Oklahoma City era have you had other periods during the during the job when well, it yeah. struck you that way? Yeah, many times during my career, uh, if it wasn't for uh, uh, my home, uh, a wife that would listen to it, supporting. I mentioned to you earlier about my father. I'm an alcoholic, and I've been, uh, I've been sober 10 years. I, I don't know how much, I, I don't want to blame work. But I'm, I know that because of the stresses of the job, I, uh, uh, it, uh, I used it as a reason. Obviously, it didn't destroy your family and break up your family. No. You know, one of the greatest things, I'm so glad I was sober prior to her death. Uh, for selfish reason that I'm able to, to uh, uh, manage the emotions of such a thing without relying on alcohol and uh, also a sense of pride for her that who always worked with me through all that my children I was one many people most people didn't know I had a problem I was fortunate in that but uh, I did and I do and I'm I take uh, I've been fortunate that I don't suffer like a lot of people. Did it ever become part of that political football that the Ems have faced us from time to time? My alcoholism? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've told people... I don't know how personal people get. Sometimes they can get rather personal. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's been a problem. I've told, especially when it first happened, I told called the mayors and told them I was in uh, rehab and things like that, and they were very supportive. I never used it as a... You know, it's almost a crutch now that you get in trouble, then you say you're going to rehab. You know, luckily for me, 
my rehab days were way before that became vogue. And I've used it, uh, I've taught courses in management about how to deal with addictions within the workplace. And amenity is supposed to be a major part of it. However, I find it uh, uh, therapeutic to make myself available for people to talk about that can't talk anywhere else. I've had several people who have told me about their issues and they speak with pride of going to AA and staying sober and being sober. Someone asked me about it the other day, I said, well, I never cared when anyone saw me drinking, so why should I care if they know that uh, it doesn't make me any weaker or any less socially desirable. You know, I'm around it all the time. It's an illness that I've got that I've, I've learned to deal with uh, as other addictions. I'm proud of myself, and I'm proud of my contributions with when I was and now that I'm not. You know, we all, we all are a bundle of... Of, uh, strengths and weaknesses and the real to me the re the real tell is when it's all over is how you've dealt with those to maximize the the strengths and some of my weaknesses have been exactly what I needed to develop my strengths